I'm going to explain how a gravity assist, more commonly known as a gravitational slingshot, works. A gravity assist is a fuel-efficient way for a spacecraft to change velocity, both the direction and the speed itself. Now, it is fuel-efficient because, aside from some course-correcting maneuvers, the spacecraft just changes its velocity using gravity. Now, because it has to go in at specific angles towards the planets, it has to travel a lot farther, which means that it will take up more time, but it is nevertheless much more fuel efficient. Now as to how gravity assists actually work, let's say we've got our planet here, and then we've got a spacecraft over here. Now, relative to the planet, our spacecraft is moving at a velocity u towards the planet. Now, as the spacecraft gets closer and closer to the planet, the trajectory of it will start to curve. And this is due to, as some of you might have guessed, gravity. Now, the gravity of the planet is trying to pull the spacecraft towards it, and the reason the spacecraft doesn't crash into the planet is because the spacecraft is moving at a high enough speed that it essentially moves out of the way of the ground before it can crash into it. It's the same principle the International Space Station uses to orbit the Earth, or any satellite for that matter. But nevertheless, after its trajectory has been changed, the spacecraft will then move away from the planet. So now, relative to the planet, the spacecraft's new velocity will be negative u because it is now moving in the opposite direction. Now, you may have noticed that in the previous example, the speed of the spacecraft did not change, which is interesting, especially considering that I said a gravity assist would change the speed of a spacecraft. And the reason for this is because we were looking at the speed of the spacecraft relative to the planet. What if we were to look at it relative to, say, the sun? So now we have our planet, and relative to the sun, the planet is moving at a velocity v. And we still have our spacecraft, which was moving at a velocity relative to the planet of u. Now, relative to the sun, we need to factor in the velocity of the planet. And, because the planet and the spacecraft are going in opposite directions, we have to subtract the velocity of the planet. So, Relative to the sun, the spacecraft is moving at u minus v. Now, when the spacecraft then swings around, relative to the planet, it was moving at a velocity u. But of course, relative to the sun, we have to factor in the velocity of the planet. And because the spacecraft and the planet are now moving in the same direction, relative to the sun, the spacecraft is moving at u minus plus v. So, relative to the sun, we increased the velocity of the spacecraft by 2v. Now, what if you want to decrease the velocity of your spacecraft? So, let's say we've got our same planet here, still moving at a velocity v, and for this, to decrease the speed, we will simply go in the opposite way. So, we have our spacecraft, which is moving at a velocity of w relative to the planet. Now, relative to the sun, it is w plus v, because the planet and the spacecraft are going in the same direction. Now, when the spacecraft swings around, it is now going in the opposite direction of the planet, meaning that its velocity relative to the sun is w minus v. So, in this scenario, we effectively decreased the speed of the spacecraft by 2v. So, if you want to increase the speed of your spacecraft, simply go in the opposite direction of the planet, and if you want to decrease the speed of your spacecraft, go in the same direction as your planet. Now, for those of you familiar with physics, more specifically energy, you may notice something strange. Because here, we have a relatively low velocity, and in here, we have a higher velocity. Now, a higher velocity means more kinetic energy. 
which is strange, because their relative potential energies are equivalent, and every other velocity seems to be equivalent. And obviously, energy cannot be created. Well, the extra kinetic energy comes from the planet. So, while the spacecraft goes faster, the planet goes slightly slower. Now, it is an insignificant amount, certainly nothing you would ever notice, but the spacecraft takes some of the energy from the planet when its speed is increasing, and loses some energy to the planet to decrease its speed. Now again, this change in velocity on the planet is nothing you would ever notice, but nevertheless, that is where the energy comes from, or is lost to. Alright, so, so far, I've discussed what would happen if a spacecraft comes in parallel to the velocity of the planet. But what would happen if a spacecraft comes in at an angle relative to the velocity of the planet? Well, to figure that out, let's have our planet here, which is moving at a velocity v relative to the sun. And then we have our spacecraft up here, which is moving at an angle. Now, we can measure the angle between the spacecraft and the velocity of the planet, and we will call that angle theta. Now, the angle that the spacecraft comes in at is the angle that the spacecraft leaves at. So let's say it comes in at a 45 degree angle. That means it will leave at a 45 degree angle. This is why when a spacecraft comes in parallel to the velocity of the planet, it leaves parallel to the velocity of the planet. Now, when it comes in at an angle, we cannot simply add the velocity to figure out its relative change in velocity relative to the sun. We have to use components to figure out the change in velocity relative to the sun. So, for that, let's say we've got our spacecraft over here, which we will say is moving at a velocity s relative to the planet. Now, partly the spacecraft is moving perpendicular to the planet, or in the y direction. And partly the spacecraft is moving parallel to the velocity of the planet, or in the x direction. Now, because the velocity in the x direction and the velocity of the planet are parallel, this angle here is also theta. Now, you notice here that we have a triangle. So to figure out the components of the velocity of the spacecraft, we need to use trigonometry. So, the velocity in the y direction is the same as the sine of theta times the total velocity. And the velocity in the x direction is the same as cosine of theta times the total velocity. Now, both of these velocities are relative to the planet. Now, when the spacecraft then leaves the planet, we'll still have its components, the velocity in the y direction when it leaves will be the same. It will still be sine of theta times s. Now, the velocity in the x direction is what is affected by the velocity of the planet, or the gravitational assist. Now, in the x direction, the velocity of the spacecraft will be cosine of theta times s minus v relative to the sun. It is minus again because the velocity in the x direction and the velocity of the planet are going in opposite directions. Now, when the spacecraft then leaves the planet, its velocity in the x direction relative to the sun will be cosine of theta times the velocity of the spacecraft plus the velocity of the planet. So, if you want to figure out the velocity of the spacecraft when it is coming in at an angle, you simply need to split it apart into its components, and only focus on the x direction. The y direction remains constant. So that was how a gravitational assist works. I hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya!